So, hey, do you know that feeling when you've spent a couple of months modeling a car, then you hit the render button and it looks like this? Hmm. Well, one of the key elements of getting a nice car render is the lighting. Good materials only make the car look realistic. Lighting is what makes a car look awesome. Sadly, almost no one makes tutorials on this topic, and that's why I'll now give it a shot. Studying reference images. Well, before we go into all the technical stuff, looking at the lighting setup and, and all that, um, we need to find some reference images, because references for lighting is almost as important as it is for like modeling and, and materials and texturing. Well, lighting is all about about communicating the shape of an object to the viewer and looking at a reference image is often give you, give you some kind of general idea about how this lighting setup can be done. So I found a couple of images of some cars uh, and I want to break down just just very, very simple uh, the lighting setup. One of the things I noticed about this lighting setup was that that the photographer, he, he, um, he kind of highlighted all these lines and this line is uh, like highlighted with with some kind of light, and then underneath it there's a dark reflection. So this gives it some kind of contrast. The same thing is happening at the back. So it's because these lines are very important to this car, um, and that's why he he wants to highlight them. So kind of the same thing here. Um, the car is black, and these very very bright white lines kind of is kind of like an um, an outline of the car, and it outlines the the uh, the curves as well, and the these uh, edges, I guess. Yeah. The same thing goes for this one. Um, well, here you notice they have some kind of uh, some kind of smooth gradient um, here in the door. I guess that's that's they use that to like um, like tell the viewer that there's a curve, uh, some sign of, some kind of soft curve. Um, yeah, so you see some of these have very sharp reflections and some have more like matte and diffuse like rough reflections. So in my opinion, these rough reflection reflections, they give the car some kind of metallic um, like an aluminium look compared to, for instance, um, oh, this this uh, image right here, which is it's still a met metallic paint, but it has very sharp reflections as well. So. It depends on the car you're making. Um, so here again, we, we got a very boxy car. So that's why he chose to like make some kind of um, lighting setup that that supports that kind of car. So very simple, like one line going across the car. And then he has some uh, reflection on this front wheel and a bit of the back. Just I guess that's just to show that, that it's sticking out, kind of. Oh, one last thing. Be sure to remember the rim light or else this will happen, like the end of the car just disappears into nowhere. Pre-visualizing your lighting setup. So we're back in Blender and we are ready to set up the lighting. But before we do that, we, we have to like make some kind of strategy, some kind of plan um, and make a couple of things ready before we, we, we start lighting the car. So first of all, when I'm making lighting setups, I usually have like a huge window up here uh, where I can edit the lights, the light planes and stuff. And then I have a pre preview window down here. Um, but be sure to make this window quite small because if you make it too big, it will take a long time to render. Uh, and you need you you really need this preview to update quite uh, a bit quickly, uh, so you can see the the edits you do in real time. One very very important thing is that you cannot move the camera once you've decided on an angle. When you've started making setting up the lights, you cannot move it because then you will break the reflections. I've made this very beautiful lighting setup right here. Um, with just one uh, emission plane over here. So if I start moving the camera around, you see that reflection changes as well. So if you made this very specific, very complicated lighting setup and you move the camera, everything breaks. So don't do that. Just a, a tiny tip for the beginners in here. Um, so if you want to render a car but you think it's very difficult, try rendering rendering the side of the car, the front of the car, or the back of the car, or maybe even the top of the car. Because these like 60 degree um, renders are pretty difficult in my opinion. So before I go ahead and put in a lot of lights, try thinking about how do you want this to, like, which kind of lights do you want where. Think about the reference images. First of all, we need to, to like, highlight all these edges, these lines, because they're very important for this car, I think. Um, like, all these lines, it also gives some kind of impression of speed. 
I like this line of the bonnet as well. If we also want these to be uh, lit down here, like uh, the lines. We also want some focus on the headlight um, because it's very important. There's a lot of t detail inside the headlight we want to like show with some nice lighting. And a kind of gradient going like, um, it's difficult to draw gradients with <laughs> this kind of tool, um, but some gradient um, here in the door and then a gradient as well on um, like the windscreen. And of course a lot of rim light. Rim light is very important. Perfect. So I guess we're ready to get into the lighting. Lighting the car, <clears throat> finally. So we are ready to set up the lights for the car. First of all, lighting a car is all about experimenting and trying new stuff. However, like when you're troubleshooting, like technology and stuff, only do one thing at a time. If you add like 10 lamps and you think, oh, this is gonna look cool, it probably won't work. Um, because you don't really know what it, like each lamp does, so it's it's very hard to like uh, identify the problem afterwards. So add just one light at a time. So the way I made this, let me just hide some of these. Very very simple. Add a plane. Go to the materials tab. Add an emission shader, and then you are ready to go. Actually, just bump up the strength a bit. So always look at the at the preview window when you're when you're making lights when you're setting up the lights for your your car um, just start by you know experimenting trying to to get that kind of room light and usually it's a good idea to hide um, the plane f like so the camera does not see it only the reflection of it so uh, I want this rim light to um, to go to highlight this edge over here and then this line as well if if I can make that happen so try rotating it, scaling it, everything. Well, you can do basically everything. There's no rules, so <laughs> just try out some stuff and try to get that the reflection you want. So for instance, down here, it's it's a bit too thick, I guess. Uh, maybe rotating a bit more and, and something like that would help. But you can also um, add in a color ramp node. Uh, no, a gradient node and then a color ramp node to control that. So let's connect those up, connect that to there. Let's just take a look at the plane. So it's color ramping from like in the wrong direction. So we'll just add control T, um, this mapping node, set the C value to 270. And now I can control the fall off with the color ramp node. So just Keep in mind that now the reflection, um, it's going to reflect this dark area, like completely black. Um, so if you don't want that, you need to do some fancy stuff with, with a transparent shade and stuff and something like that. You can also just like change this reflection to some kind of grayish color. Then you won't really notice it. So moving on. Um, let's delete this and go back to the old one. So for instance, this this plane right here, it has a very, very weird shape. Uh, and I made this shape because I wanted to emit some light onto the front of the car as well. So if you, if you look closely, or not closely, if you look at this part right here, uh, you see the light is kind of bending around the car. And I really like that effect. Um, so. I've also um, watched a video about a guy who, who lights real cars and he said think of the camera then place the lights 90 degrees away from the camera. So don't place a light up here, up here or something. Place them 90 degrees away from the camera. So just to get a bit idea of what the effect uh, of this lamp is, I'll just hide the other ones. So this one is pretty advanced. So, um, well, starting off, we, we can take a look at the, at the plane. So it has this very basic um, color ramp gradient going on, like where where I made this very sharp white line at the bottom, and then it uh, faded to a a like dark gray, and then to a very dark gray, and then it faded like smoothly. I I really like the effect that this makes. You can see it very. Uh, it's quite obvious right here down here. Like it's very bright. It it kind of has some kind of edge, and then it fades away. And it, like it, like it, it it shows the viewer it has some kind of curve, um, and even though the the curve is real, it also kind of fakes it, <laughs> and I think that looks good. So I don't like this um, this sharp edge at the back of the reflection, and well, sometimes you have to to just accept them, 
but I used a color ramp. Um, let me just show you here. A color ramp to kind of remove that effect. So I just faded out the back of this uh, plane. And, well, you can see the difference right here. So it just smoothed it out a bit. So I also got, I guess it's this lamp right here, which kind of uh, continues that reflections, reflection kind of. Um, it's not perfect, but it's okay. So I got these planes right here and this one right here and that right here. Those are just to kind of highlight certain features. Like for instance, this one just highlights this line right here. It also casts a reflection down here, which I actually don't like, but I can't really fix it. If I move it, it yeah, it, it does that instead. So yeah, well, sometimes you will have to deal with that in Photoshop later. Um, so I got this one right here, which uh, kind of just highlights the um, some of the parts of the headlight, and this uh, tiny plane down here, which just highlights a bit of of the grid. Well, and the last one, the large plane up here, it uh, makes this nice gradient on the on the windscreen, which you see in very in, in like a lot of car images. It looks like this. Kind of the same idea, a, a uh, gradient map with a color ramp to control it. If you've made like a an, a render, you've set up all the lights, but you realize, oh, it's too dark. Oh, do I have to go through all the lights and change the values? If you're, you, if you're making an animation or a scene or something, yes, then you'd have to do that. But otherwise, if you just need this one image and you don't need to use the lighting setup for anything else, you can just cheat. Uh, then you can go into the um, the scene, the, uh, the scene tab, I guess it is. Go to colors management, then check curves, use curves, then change this this white white value. So that just increases the overall brightness of the image. Well, that was it for the car lighting. Um, remember, use color ramps and gradient maps. Like white planes are really boring to look at in reflections. And make sure you only add one light at a time and try to keep it simple, uh, even though I I didn't. Um, but yeah, and this takes a lot of practice and usually the first uh, lighting setup you make, it, it just isn't very good. So try, uh, try a couple of times and then settle on something. You'll learn a bit every time. When the reflections look wrong. So, this last thing is like kind of thing I've been working on for for quite some time working with um it's when when you look at the reflections you might have noticed it when I showed you the lighting setup. Um some reflections just look wrong. Uh, like for instance right here, you have this weird wavy pattern and it's like it's it's edge kind of like it doesn't look good. So that's because of the topology, uh, and it just isn't very good at this area right here. And it might also be because the uh, subdivision level is, level is too low. But you can also like encounter this, um, for instance, if I I try to hide it, but I actually made a uh, very bad topology for this door right here. If I just raise this, yeah, you see it right here. Um, you see this very wavy pattern. Uh, on the real model, that would be a straight line going all the way across. So it especially it is very difficult to get this straight line when you have uh, things like handles and and these um, like holes into the into the body of the car. Uh, and that's kind of the problem with modeling cars with polygons. And well, um, this guy I'll post a link in the description. He's working at Ebel Studios. Um, he 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 made a article about this, and it was really really like interesting to read it. Um, but I haven't had time to to try out some of this stuff and so on. But but I can, I'll just really briefly explain what it's about. So basically, these wavy patterns patterns they appear because of the subdivision uh, method that most people use in Blender subdivision surface, and it's very hard to get evenly like like perfectly curved objects and when you're working with matte and diffuse materials it doesn't really matter because you won't see these imperfections but when you're working with like very glossy objects like cars and uh, reflective objects you you will see the mistakes really really quickly so for instance if i've modeled this window um, like and i i've accidentally 
pushed out these vertices right here. You might not notice it when you're just looking at it. Well, if you if you look closely at the reflection, you can kind of see it, it, it does something weird there. But if you look at the reflection in the render view, um, you definitely see it. So this is taking it to the extreme, but just just very very subtle mistakes you will notice them right away in the in the rendered view so i think and that uh, you can even see it right here my my screen isn't perfect my windscreen isn't perfect it has some kind of curve right here and then it's more flat up here um so i think that you can fix some of these issues by just looking at the rendered view while you are editing the model um but it's not the the uh, the ideal way to do it but if you're interested um, to know more about that, just go ahead and read his article. It's really, really uh, interesting. If you encounter a lot of these mistakes on your model, uh, you can either try to fix them, and I I encourage you to do so, because if you want to sell the models or just use them later, it's very annoying if they have a lot of issues uh, and like problems with, uh, with the topology. But otherwise, you can try to hide it. And the way you do that is basically by hiding... Um, by lighting the edges. Um, if you have a kind of a gradient going across a surface with some kind of weird reflection, error mistake, something, you won't really notice it. But if you have a very sharp reflection, you will notice it right away. So for instance, instead of lighting it like this, which we talked about, you want to light kind of the, um, the, the curves and the, the lines. So you wouldn't ever do this anyway. But if you do something like this, you will notice it. Some people will notice these curvy things right here. But if you just put the light um, at the right point, you won't probably won't notice it. So, to sum it up, lighting takes time and a lot of tries. Remember to take a look at your reference images when you feel lost or you don't know how to light a certain part of the car. And don't forget that lighting is meant to communicate the shape of the car, so let the reflections of the light highlight essential lines and important details. And please, don't use lights with uniform white colors. They are so boring. Anyway, that was it for the lighting tutorial. Be sure to leave your feedback in the comments below, so I know what to change for my future videos. Also, I would like to know if you like these in-depth videos, or if you prefer the 5 minute ones, with some more basic stuff. Well. Nothing more to say then, have a good day people.